In this example, we apply velocity to the rate of change. The position s in feet of a falling rock t seconds after it is dropped is given by the function s of t equals 16 t squared. A. Find the average velocity of the rock from t equals 3 to t equals 3.5 seconds. So the average velocity is the change in position over the change in time, which is the position evaluated at 3.5 seconds minus the position evaluated at 3 seconds divided by the change in time, 3.5 minus 3 seconds. The position at 3.5 is when we plug 3.5 into our position function. So 16 times 3.5 squared, and then the position at 3 seconds is 16 times 3 squared, divided by 0.5 seconds, 3.5 minus 3. Now we can, of course, just compute this with a calculator, but I'd like to do some simplifying to make it a little bit easier. I see a common factor of 16, so I'm going to factor it out, and I'm left with 3.5 squared minus 3 squared over 0.5. Those computations lead me to 104. Now, because this is a real life scenario, we need words in our answer. Words in our question means words in our answer. Now the change in position is a measure of feet and the change in time is a measure of seconds in our problem. Therefore, we're dividing feet by seconds, so our answer is really 104 feet per second. And there's our average velocity over that time interval. B, find the velocity, V, of the rock at t equals 3 seconds after it begins to fall. Notice this was a rate of change over a time interval, that's the average rate of change, whereas this is the rate of change at one point in time. And of course, when it's one point in time, a rate of change is a derivative. So this velocity, we're calling it v of t, is the derivative of the position s prime of t, which is, of course, the limit. As t approaches that one point in time, three seconds, of the change in position s of t minus s of three over the change in time, t minus three. And we apply this to our problem. The limit, as t approaches three, s of t is our function, 16 t squared, minus s of 3 means we're plugging 3 into our function, 16 3 squared, over t minus 3. Now to evaluate this limit, of course I tried substitution, but it yields 0 in the denominator, so that's not going to work. I notice we can factor, so let's do that. The limit as t approaches 3, I can take out the 16, and I'm left with t squared minus 9. This, of course, is a difference of squares, which, which lets me do the limit as t approaches 3 of 16 times t minus 3 times t plus 3 over t minus 3. Of course, I have common factors to divide out, and now I'm clear to do the substitution. So I get 16 times the quantity, 3 plus 3, or 16 times 6, which makes 96. Now I'm still doing a rate of change of position over time, so I'm still getting feet per second. 96 feet per second is the instantaneous rate of change at 3 seconds. Notice how that's very close to that average rate of change over the time interval that's close to that one point in time. Think about why that is a lower number at 3 seconds than that interval from 3 to 3.5 seconds, the velocity is higher. Thanks for watching.